I am Isander. And I am Coda. And today we're going to be talking about the Aspect Warriors. The Aspect Warriors. They're the ones Warriors. who won out on the poll. Uh, sorry, Gene Steelers. Whoops. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Whatever. It gives me an opportunity to plan out my uh, Gene stolen outfit. If Abaddon doesn't win, you're down to those two choices. It's Abaddon and the Gene Steelers. Sound off in the comments. Whoever gets the most votes gets made. The other disappears. Once again, I am hard putting my thumb on the scale to keep Abaddon to his 13th poll. Or you could spike Coda. Choice is yours. Choice is yours. Uh, we also have a Patreon where you can get a bonus episode every single week, access to the Discord, and a bunch of other perks, all while helping us keep this show going. So if you want to do that, head on over to patreon.com slash Isander and Coda. And now, let us get into effectively Eldar job training. Eldar job training? Yeah, it's it's, it's Are we going to watch uh, an employee safety video? G somebody will come in and give us a speech about wearing helmets oh, and three awesome. points of contact on a ladder. Yeah. Yeah, I think so, but I, I don't think and, they have and, videos. And, and proper uh, workplace protection, like steel-toed boots. No, those are just bought for them. Those are just bought for them. It's provided by the job. Okay. That's but that, that's basically what the okay. Aspect Warriors are. It's a gig that they've taken up. And before we get into why they've taken it up, we need to get, well, before we even get into the gig, we need to get into why they've taken it up. And that is because, I'm not going to mince words here, the Eldar have lost so hard on almost every metric. There's no other way around it. It's just a fact. Look at where they started. Look at where they are now. Precisely. They went from sundering gods <laughs> to crying about humanity. And... It's a really tragic story. Dude, the poor Eldar. Yeah, yeah, it's Honestly, no good I feel bad, bad for them. Thing. Yeah, no, they, they, they are veterans from the oldest of wars. They remember a time when humans were not what they are. They remember a time when orcs were definitely not what they are. They remember a time when the Necrons had skin still. They go way back. And there are some Eldar who are still alive to this day that know that and were there for that. And that has an effect on the psyche. Yeah. You pair that with the fact that the reason they lost so hard is because um, there used to be three Chaos Gods and now there's four and the fourth one's their fault. <laughs> and um, De facto their fault. Hard too. their fault. So Nash wouldn't exist. Well, then we enter into time shenanigans because Chaos always existed and hasn't if that makes sense oh yeah because it's one of those things the warp is one of it, it's like a weird so Nash is always like, there but this was when they were actually born uh, yeah y you know it's very weird it's very difficult y yeah I, I can't say for sure they wouldn't exist without the eldar what i can say is they certainly helped uh, they got the party started baby the eldar was their catalyst into the real into real space yep uh quick and dirty highlight reel uh they won really hard they served in this thing called the war in heaven uh beat the necrons skin off effectively um and then kind of had a long victory lap got really 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 bored with that and decided to start seeking more and more pleasure out of entertainment it went <laughs> from um it went from watching national geographic documentaries to going on safaris to actually see the animals to locking yourself in a cage and fighting the animals to locking all the animals in a cage and yourself and fighting them to a bunch of other weird stuff that we're not going to get into. <laughs> it, it got out of A hand. bunch of weird stuff that we could only discuss on patreon.com slash Isander and Coda. Yeah. They, <laughs> anything you can imagine overdoing, they overdid and then some. I'm, I, yeah. it's, it, got, it got so messy that out of it spawned the chaos god described as she who thirsts. I mean, just look up any art of Slanesh at all, ever. You'll get the gimmick. Uh, you will get oh, the gimmick. So and quickly. imagine what it takes to make that appear and leave a permanent hole that everyone has to navigate around now. No, no, no. Imagine what it would take to summon that and then, I don't know, multiply it by a factor of what's Slanesh's lucky number? I think six. Six. Multiply it by six. Corn is a... Yeah, I think six. Are they literally six, seven, eight, nine? Yeah, I think so. That's funny. Because I know Corn is eight, uh, Zinch is nine, I think. Nurgle seven. I could be wrong. Oh boy, am I going to get corrected if I'm wrong there? I think Slanesh is six, though. They are literally six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. It's kind of funny. Yeah. Th th that's what they do. But uh, in everyone else's case with Chaos, it's something they're vaguely aware of and kind of a problem, you know? Like, Chaos is pretty. 
the equal opportunity. These hands are rated E for everyone. They will hit anyone they can if you get close enough. Corn especially will. Uh, Slanesh, though, and the Eldar in a very weird situation where, sure, the other Chaos Gods, the Eldar don't really want to get near, and vice versa, the other Chaos Gods don't really want the Eldar near them, but um, the Eldar have Slanesh staring at them. Yeah. From birth till death. And I'm not talking like, oh, you know, the neighbor across the street looking at me as I go to school. No, I'm talking, there's a picture of you being born in the hospital and Slanesh is in the background. <laughs> It's it's that level of intently, I am always aware of all of your existence at any given moment, and the frame! You die, I will steal your soul faster than God can. No, Slanesh is, you, you know that video, or not that video, that meme image of everybody standing around a um, uh, uh, freshly buried uh, grave, and mm. there's one dude in front of it just going... Yeah. Slanesh is that. I, I've always preferred the, the, the one time... Tom hard died from Tom and Jerry, and you see his soul floating up, leaving his body, it's supposed to go to heaven, the escalator's there, and a hand just grabs it and yanks it down. I thought it was the escalator, like, uh, fell out from under him as he was he reaching the top. No, I remember a hand grabbing him and dragging him down. <laughs> straight to hell. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. There is no debate. You don't get to see the pearly gates, just straight down. That has always been the way I interpret it. So from birth till death, that is just a thing that is on Every Eldar's mind. Slanesh is just staring at your soul. And the, the, the important licking thing... Licking their lips. Ugh, they definitely are. Um, the, the important thing... <laughs> was, was that really that much of a no, there was a, flashback? There, no, there was an internal debate, and I, Logic won that day, so I'm not going to say that. Um, <laughs> what, what matters is Eldar are very psychic, too. They're very, they feel things in ways not many others do. So this isn't just something that they're taught in school, like, hey, when you die, Slanesh is going to get you, whoops. It's, it's, they can feel it. They can feel Slanesh on the periphery just kind of looking at me. Like you, you're born and literally the moment you reach some form of, of, of cognition, you're like, eh. Yeah, I would say precognition, you could feel it probably. The Eldar are really, like Eldar can just die from overstimulation. That's a thing. They, they feel in ways, it's part of why it's really hard to write for them. They feel in such extremes that people can't even fathom. To be, to be, to be fair, to be fair, I kind of feel it. The last time I was in arc, an arcade, like a couple of weeks ago, oh God, it was awful. I felt like I was going to pass out. Yeah, but now imagine if the arcade was telling you, hey, rip your tendons out and make a harp out of them. Yeah, no. <laughs> no. That, no. That, that is the plight that haunts all the Eldar. They have many different ways of coping. Some have gone full Amish. They do not interact with any technology, any hedonism, and ride dinosaurs to work. It's really cool, actually. I, I actually really like the, they, they're the, the, equivalent, the Exodites aesthetic. Yeah, they're the equivalent of that one. Co actually, fun fact, did you know there are still Costco's with stables and hay bales? Yeah, they're out in like rural Pennsylvania where there are still Amish. Because Amish people have money. They just don't have visas. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> that, that's all that's the only difference they just they they, they they yeah they're all paper no plastic yes exactly so some eldar have gone that route others have gone well what if we double down and so they have and slanesh is amused enough by this that it it, it buys them time effectively it, this does work say what you will about the dark, dark eldar it does buy them time which is kind of all they care about Slanesh is sitting in the corner, still licking their lips, watching intently, going, mm, I'm getting a lot more out of this than if I just ate your soul. Exactly. That's, that's what the Dark Eldar are up to. Others have, I mean, there's 101 ways they've tried to skin this cat, and all of them kind of work. Um, the main ones we'll be talking about today are the craft worlds who got into the ships, and their main survival shtick is basically wearing a Pokeball around their neck. And the second they die, it'll open and capture them before Slanesh can. And boom, done, that's it. And from there, it's shipped off into the middle of these massive ships that they call Craft Worlds and stored in basically a massive vault full of every other Eldar who's died ever, ever. Uh, which means you don't technically, not even in death, will do the end for you because, okay, cool, you're now uploaded into Google. Some kid's going to ask you how to water a plant. But hey, it's better than going to, it's better than whatever Slanesh has planned. That, that much we know. I don't know what was coming after death, but I know what was going to happen if she got me. So <laughs> I will stay right here comfortably, very much so. 
Um, in those ships, they don't just keep um, a hard drive full of every other Eldar. Uh, they also have a piece of their god of war, effectively, just chained in there, too, as... as a, a warding, a warding token, just like, uh, worst comes to worst, anything tries to kill us, we have that thing in the background. Yeah, and they, they do a really good, well, because here's a really cool thing. When, when, when your soul gets put in this flash drive, effectively, they can take it out and put it into a mech, effectively, and have you fight again, which is not taken lightly, it's very weird, it is, like, digging up a veteran's grave and putting him in some armor, it's not... Nobody wants to do Listen, that. Listen, I think it's kind of badass. I'm not going to lie. It's so... So you want to go to Arlington and arm them? I would love to see a George Washington zombie army. A, re, a zombie revolutionary remember, war not, era. Not everyone army. in there is just like great at their job. Some of them are just decent. It's every Eldar that died. Not every oh. outstanding Eldar. It's every Eldar that died. So, or at least... That they could get to, <laughs> they couldn't get them all. So it's it is seen in the same way you would see necromancy effectively. If somebody could go into a graveyard right now, raise them up as an army, everyone should at least have some qualms about that. No matter how effective they are as soldiers, it's a little weird, and you shouldn't do that unless you have to. But you're telling me an American Gothic style story about a Revolutionary War era zombie army is not sound awesome. I mean, it, Awesome, yes. Morally reprehensible, yeah. I mean, yeah. Two things can be true at the same time. That's why that's why it's a gothic story. And and so that's how they see it. However, the coolest thing they can do is they can also take that shard of the god of war and put it into a mech and have that thing fight. It is so cool. It never wins. It is allergic to victory. How? Um, It's so, a god of war. Yes, that we can bring back however often we want. Oh... So the writers tend to use it very aggressively as a, how strong is this thing? Let's throw the avatar of Cain at it. And then it loses. And everyone goes, wow, that is strong. Yeah, but like, I don't know. If you kill Kratos multiple times, it's just, it, the impact's now lost. He's going to come back. Yeah, no, it has not. Because they, they keep doing it. It's really, really, really rare for them not to to just lose outright as a function of plot. It's one of the few problems I have with it because Cain is a real, he's a whole thing, man. He is. He's one of the Eldar gods. Of course he's a whole thing. And, and the, the thing about Cain versus Korn is they are kind of the same. It's two legally distinct entities. <laughs> if that makes sense. They are both. <laughs> they are both gods of war, rage, blood, you know, that that's that's what they go for, right? However, and this is best done in because they both deserve their own episodes. So this this is a distinction best made in those episodes, but the quick and dirty is one is an artificial facsimile of something that's innate to nature if that makes sense. Mm. So it's the equivalent of uh if Cain is a nuclear reactor, let's say. Corn's the sun. Uh, and I know they use different processes. I'm aware. That's just for the purposes of illustration. Well, here. for for now, fusion reactors are on yeah, they're on the but, upside. But 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 that's kind of the 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 diff the main difference between them. It does not mean one is not powerful. It's just one is almost innate. It's woven into the fabric. One is a single, like, yeah. fragmentary portion of the larger. Cain, the way I'm going to put it is Cain did not need to happen. Corn already had and always would have, mm. you know? <laughs> I mean, like, Cain is described as having both hands perpetually just pouring with viscera. We can even think about it. The, the, that's what he uses to get you, <laughs> you know? So they are perpetually pouring with viscera because that is his job. That's what he does every day. Um, Corn has waterfalls of the stuff. Like, yeah. he's, he's got a moat at this point, you know? Yeah. He, you look at any picture of Corn ever, there are a couple of things you will notice, and it is skulls right next to the skull throne, and you won't guess what all the water in that art is. It's not water. It's not water. And that's a very, you can immediately tell the different scales they operate in, but that does not mean that Cain does not punch well above his weight. Um, when every other Eldar god died, he was one of the three who made it out, and one got captured, one threw pocket sand in another one's face and ran away, and he died fighting. And even then, Cain didn't die fighting, he was just shattered fighting. 
So he's that guy. He was going down, yeah. just like screaming. Yeah, yeah. If I remember correctly, Kane was one of the ones who force. This is coming off of memory, so accuracy dodgy. Um, if I remember correctly, Kane foresaw that the Eldar were going to cause this chaos. They foresaw that he would die by their own hands, and so he decided, okay, fine. I'll kill them, that way it doesn't happen. I mean, if you foresee, hmm, the Eldar are going to be the death of themselves and me, well, they can be, I'll be the death of them then. <laughs> I, I think I'll be fine. I don't know if they will, but we'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. Exactly. It'll be fine. <laughs> I think. I don't remember. Kane needs his own episode. But the reason he's relevant is all of the aspect warriors represent an aspect of him, in a sense. And, you know, there are also those shards that still float around and don't get used very well. But they <laughs> exist, and they're very useful, you know? Um, if... if um, if Kegarak has his whole clown troop running around, th this is what that this is what Kane has running around in his stead and all of them do a very different thing every Eldar will wind up on this path at some point um most of the time it's you choose your path as a distraction from Slanesh um because like I said the Eldar feel things a lot um and one of the key lessons they learned which is a very important lesson uh Idle hands are the devil's plaything. Ah. <laughs> and in this case, idle hands brought forth the devil, and we are now her plaything. Well, so. Idle hands. Mm -hmm. Well, the hands. Pro probably, I, I, I don't know. Uh, idle, 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 idle everything. Whatever, whatever. What matters is the, 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 uh, bu the if they stay busy, idle they don't. mouths. Jesus, if they stay busy. Ears, maybe? They won't have to worry about the odd that. toe, or deal, or think with the fact that El Slanesh is staring all the time at them. So this is kind of the just they're like, don't I, think about it, don't think about it, don't think about it. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> this is their. I'm just gonna go meditate in in the woods under a waterfall and like they can't touch me. Yes, and this isn't like, oh, I've chosen the the path of the engineer. Let me go do my day job and then go. No, it is. Full, total immersion. It is, I will not leave this path until I have mastered it. And then it is this complete, they see it as a mask that they can then put on in the future. And then they go collect another mask. They, and they, they read the five rings. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very, it takes very, it's a very Eastern approach to it. Yeah. So, and it, that philosophy works really well with the Eldar specifically. It kind of works with the human lifespan because you dedicate 10 years of your life to something, you'll be fantastic at it. You'll be great at it. The problem yeah. is you have got like 10 of those tops and two of them you're spent developing. The other two, you're probably not in good health. So really you got six of them left, you know? Yeah, so good luck spending all 10 there, years there are, on one There thing. are limits to this. And you also want to have fun too, you know? You can't just be work till I die. We don't have Slanesh staring at us all the time. <laughs> and so uh, it, there are some holes with that that aren't compatible with a normal human lifespan that the Eldar's lifespan fixes. Because an Eldar can have a teenage rebellious phase, can go fight in multiple wars, and then still dedicate a century to mastering a craft and still have a long life after that. Yeah. They could do all of that and be the equivalent of an Eldar 24. So it works really well for them. And that's something you have to remember as you go down these paths is it sounds like, how the hell are you supposed to master this and then move on? It's a whole lifespan's worth of work. And it is a human lifespan's worth of work. And then some, they just live a lot longer than we do. I, 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 do, I do really, really like uh, that that's a common, or not, not, not even common. I'd put it to the level of consistent. A consistent character trait when it comes to elves is, yeah, sure. You've got the like uh, staring down their noses, just like full, full eccentric, uh, uh, pretentious asshole that oh, like, elves the usually are, are. They are still pretentious. I promise you that. But the consistency is like, I, I, it's, sometimes it's kind, kind, kind of earned. Because they've lived so many, so many of your lifespans, they can do what you have done ten times over mm -hmm. in your hundred years of living, if that. Mm -hmm. I mean, my favorite, the problem with elves and the way they're usually written is they are written at, about as competent as people are, despite being ten times older, you know? My favorite way that elves are portrayed is not 
that they are overly, they're not overly filled with hubris per se. It's more, you go up to them and you say, we're going to storm this. And he's going to tell you, that's a terrible idea because this, this, this is going to happen. Because he's already made that same mistake and, 10 times over. And then over. the human doesn't listen and that, that, and that happen. And the, uh, and the elf just goes, I mean. I've done this before. And, and they're I've not, done the song they're not pompous about it. It's just. Yeah, I mean, it, it was going to happen. Like, I, I, I've, it's, got, it's like that old person who can like, it's going to rain. And. Five minutes later, it starts raining, and you're just befuddled at how they manage that. But they've lived here for long enough now, that they can tell. Apply that it's going to rain to literally every aspect of life because they've spent how many hundreds of years living. Yeah, yeah. And so that I love the Eldar paths. I, I, again, I really like elves because it's just, of course, that's what people would be if we lived for a thousand years. Boredom would be the main thing we fight, if not death. Yeah, so. you'd you could dedicate ten years to I don't know underwater basket weaving just because. What the what the hell else are you gonna do? Yeah, <laughs> it has to happen. And I then mean, when somebody else comes up to you and is just like, I want to try underwater basket weaving, you're just like. Psst. Here's what you're gonna deal with. Yeah, here's what you're gonna do. Or you alternatively get the fun of teaching because half of the fun of knowing something, or actually, I'm not gonna say half the fun, but a good chunk of fun is, oh my god, I know this, and you're asking about it. Oh, this is gonna be great. Mm -hmm. And if they're passionate and you're passionate too, then it just goes. It, on it creates a connection point immediately. So uh, they they have every path imaginable. You hit the nail on the head from underwater basket weaving to engineering to farming. Today we're going to be talking about the warriors because it's 40k. We don't see the Eldar farm ever. We see them stomp face. I'd love to see the Eldar farms. Yeah, we, you say the the craft old Eldar at least because they give me the same vibes of uh, the Quarians from Mass Effect. If the Quarians weren't constantly having to r repair entire chunks of their ships because they're broke... <laughs> Well, the Eldar aren't broke, but they are constantly servicing that ship because it is all they have. <laughs> like, you, you must understand, an Eldar, like, green movement, save the earth, is like, ah, please patch that hole in the ship. <laughs> <laughs> this needs to happen, dude. We're going to, we're going to violently depressurize and everybody on the ship is going to die. Yeah, and the problem is those ships are, their whole world... And then in the center of it is a shard of their god and everyone who's ever lived on the ship. So it's no wonder the Eldar would sacrifice whole swaths of the galaxy before a single craft world was ever considered to be worth destroying. Because it's just, it's not just a living place. Mm -hmm. It's, it's not just a house. It's a home. Yeah. And I mean, when you think about how long the average Eldar lives to, I mean... You can see why they get so pretentious about people because one Eldar life is a 10 human lives, 20 human lives lost. And so they're like, eh, they'll figure it out. They'll figure it out. It's not our problem. Listen, I, I am of the I am the belief that all life is sacred, all life is precious. But, 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 I mean, they've been around a while. <laughs> we only last 100 years, if that. Yeah. Um, you can get lost down the path, you know, and when you do, you become like an exarch, which is just a workaholic. This is all you're ever going to do, no matter what. And you just love it, love it, love it to death. Uh, the reason this is not necessarily a good thing is because the, the theory, again, is masks. I'm supposed to compartmentalize this portion of myself here and this portion of myself here and this portion of myself here. And that way, I never think about that person staring behind my shoulder. From birth till death, man. I really don't want to think about that. Because they're really only staring at one compartment of me, and I can just add more mm -hmm. compartments. Yeah, yeah. It's it's the difference between... Oh, man, I need to stop giving this guy crap, because I don't even know the half of it. But it's the <laughs> it's the equivalent of... Um, you know that most actors, I could disappear into a role, reappear, disappear into a role, reappear, right? You need to stop giving him... You need to and he stop. just sounds like Elvis now. And I... Like, I don't... It, it's the best example I have, okay, of he has I, committed to the bit so hard that the bit is now kind of stuck to him, and mm -hmm. there's nothing inherently wrong with that. It's pretty cool that he was able to commit to that level. Somehow, I haven't seen Dune Part 2 yet, and I guess he's in Dune Part 2, and I kind of want to hear what he sounds like. Probably Elvis. It's it's that it's, he doesn't play an Elvis style character. I can tell you right there. He's not the only one either. This happens with method method actors too. If I remember correctly, uh, there was an actor who developed a stutter after playing a king who had a stutter, and he never had one beforehand. So you um, can just it's a thing that people do. You can commit, and I hate to use the term commit to the bit because it really does water down the significance of it. But I mean, it's a good image. Uh, you can commit to something so hard that you 
become lost in it in a sense. I mean, isn't I don't know how valid this Colin Farrell, I think is who it was. I don't know how valid this uh, this uh, proposition is, but I've heard some people say that uh, Heath Ledger's role in uh, the Batman playing the Joker kind of mm. screwed with his head a lot. It's entirely possible. Which led to his uh, mental health issues. I, I'm not sure. I have no idea what kind of stresses he was under, but if it... I mean, I heard he was really trying to get into the character there, and the Joker is a messed up character. Well, and like you look at it to this day, it's it's one of those things where somebody changed a character in such a way that it has now kind of changed how everyone sees it. Mm -hmm. and, and that's an impressive thing when you consider he was playing the Joker, someone who was really well-defined already. Who had already he, been around for, what, 60, 70 years? Oh, yeah, he, the Joker's ancient. Yeah. And so it, it's, it's the cost of doing something really, 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 really well. You have to get lost in it in a sense uh, the problem is when you can't pull back mm -hmm. you know and the other are just as prone to that if not worse because i mean come on the nice thing for the eldar is though um when that does happen when someone does get lost and it's say oh he's lost down the path of the warrior fantastic the shrine now has a full-time guard it's great because somebody needs to and you, you this is all you want to do forever and i don't even know who you are anymore so be, be a statue Go in ahead. the 41st millennium there is only war <laughs> we don't want for we need more warriors yeah um, i'm not going to complain about a surplus and they are also the ones who do the the whole ritual to awaken the avatar of kane so he can go out and get his jaw rocked again in this novel uh <laughs> And do they like full cult of the lamb where they're just like, ah, I'm going to sacrifice myself to make the big guy bigger? Um, not quite. Okay. Uh, it's a whole thing. We'll, we'll get into that at some other point. Uh, they are also the, the ones who are chosen to become the, the Phoenix Lords, which is the guy. So remember those Pokeballs we mentioned <laughs> where your soul gets trapped in it and congratulations, you get shipped off into a hard drive. That's great. It's whatever. Uh, what they will do sometimes is they'll just inlay a bunch of of those onto a set of armor. And when you put it on, you have the experience of everyone who's died and been captured in those gems effectively while you wear the armor. It's really cool. You are basically perpetually hooked up to every other warrior who wore this armor before you. Very helpful stuff. It's the, it's armor bound avatar state. Exactly. Now there are these things called Phoenix Lords. They are the most powerful people and the ones who lead these paths. Uh, they have their own armor. And when you put it on, you don't exist anymore. <laughs> Your information just gets added to theirs and they are functionally back now. Some of them haven't died, but a lot of them have died and all you do is just eh, pick up the armor and throw it on some new work obsessed guy and call it good. And he's back now. And that's a whole thing whenever one comes back because they can accomplish a lot. Hey, yeah. Some of them have struck fear into Night Lord's hearts. Others are fated to burn the whole galaxy to the ground and then some. I'm still jarred. We talked about it in the Patreon video. I'm still jarred about the striking fear into their hearts. Yeah, uh, others have gone into the warp and back out, dragging whole worlds with them, effectively. I mean, they are so competent, but there's only like seven of them, so they, they're, they're like Eldar Primarchs, so I'll be dead honest. That's I mean, that's basically what they are. You'd need someone immensely powerful to have their like a soul strong enough to just subsume somebody else yeah immediately there's no debate you don't get a chance you don't get to oh wait but like i could nope doesn't matter all you know is now all i know moving on <laughs> I, it's I the difference between armor bound avatar state mm -hmm. and abominations from tune i don't know doing so People who, it's a long story. It's a long story. <laughs> we need to watch Dune 2. Yeah, at some point. Um, first up is the Dire Avengers. Uh, they are Eldar Ultramarines. It's I see. Kind of it. Blueberries um, all across the galaxy. They are named after some of the oldest, go I mean, uh, their Phoenix Lord is named after one of their older gods. And so they're kind of like the first in, if that makes sense. Um, but they are just really well-rounded, you know. Um, they're not inherently good at any one thing. They are just really good at everything. And so you will see them the most just scattered in with armies because they're that useful. They know the best I've heard it described is they are they can listen to the music of war and tell the rhythm. They are the ultramarines. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Some, sometimes it's, you don't need the same war than what's on the tent. It's, 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 are they blue too? I don't remember. 
They are blue. Of course they are. A Games Workshop <laughs> has their favorites, don't they? Blue's a lucky they color. They really like... Uh, J- James and his workshop really do love the color blue. Blue's a lucky color. What can I say? I, I, can't, I can't remember because Eldar have a lot of different color schemes, but yeah, it is actually blue. They are seen as the elite of the elite. They're usually seen kind of noble. You, you know this song it, and dance it's, before. It's the ultramarines, you've, but you've elves. Heard, but I do like... The, I truly like the way it's described because it's not necessarily like the ultramarines where you will hear them think and it's theoretical, practical, theoretical, practical. It's very like... I know how to think. I was taught how to think in school, and I am thinking according to what school taught me. For them, it's more like, oh, I, I know the beat of this song, and uh, let's throw this in. Oh, that works great with it. It, it really is intuitive to the... It's to the Ultramarines logic gates, the... Uh, what are they called again? The Dire Avengers. The Dire Avengers are like chefs. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like this could use a little bit, a pinch more salt. I, I would say it kind of makes them feel like they're better at their job than the Ultramarines because Ultramarines have to think really hard. It takes quite a bit of, it takes, you know, that, that that brow gets furrowed. They use every wrinkle up there. Uh, the the Every time you see the Dire Avengers described, it just, it, it's natural to them is what it feels like almost. They just know how to do this. And I mean, think about it. They have a couple hundred, well... Some of them have a couple hundred years on the Ultramarines, so yeah, it would become natural. It would become say, second nature to them. Yeah, I'd, ima- to... I'd imagine if an Ultramarine had the same amount of time as an Eldar did, mm. it would become the same level of natural to them. Well, at some point, it depends because again, Eldar feel things much more than even Marines do. So this, I, it could just, it could be how they. Maybe an Ultramarine psyker. No, I think it could be a difference in how they rationalize it, where Ultramarines are aware of the underlying logic, and maybe they're just, they don't need to. They, mm. I, I know this song. I can play One of them is more left brain, one of them is more right brain. Yeah, either way, it accomplishes the task, and who's going to complain about it? Downside is, it is an Eldar force. They do not win often. <laughs> uh, not often. <laughs> However, it's not like you ever see a full army of them. Again, they're scattered in with other things, so their reputation stays unscathed. They they, they stick around as kind of like uh, supporting generals. Like, you need tactical advice. I yeah. can give you that. Yep. Uh, next up is the Howling Banshees. Uh, most of their most of them are female, actually. There, there are some guys in here, but most of them are female, and their main shtick is a very elite melee force you kind of really do not want to be near ever um they are called the howling banshees because they have this shriek that is just genuinely mortifying for that this these these are the gals that made the night lords feel a little bit of fear it's it's that yeah um it it, it is said that what their cries herald nothing but death and misfortune and the eldar even think that when they like full bore are howling it can steal your soul so it's not great it's really and i don't mean i don't mean the shang sung your soul is my routine no i mean they can yank your soul out just enough for that person who's been watching this whole time to grab it oh oh yeah oh yeah oh i see they are really scary that's horrific <laughs> yeah because it's um, not what i'm gonna do to you mm-hmm. it's what they're gonna do to you they are they are fear incarnate they are ferocious and they represent um well what seeing kane might feel like <laughs> just ah oh, great <laughs> yeah this is this, this is gonna, awesome this is not gonna end well um next up is the swooping hawks they have some fun imagery Bird people, I assume. Uh, they're yeah, they're aerial, they're jump troopers. Um, but they are named after a bird in Eldari mythology, which would just be this. Basically, if you murdered someone, their spirit would go into a hawk, and that hawk would circle you until you died. Which is, that's a cool myth. I like that, that is myth. So tough. That's a very fun myth. That is such a good lie. Oh, yeah, this guy's guilty immediately. And so that is what they that is what they tend to do. They tend to be that hawk swooping around the guilty. Except um, instead of just being this omen that oh my god they did it, it's they more, just kill you. Yeah, no, it's more than <laughs> the hawks getting vengeance now. Uh, their 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 phoenix lord is one of the more fun ones. He's described as the fastest Eldar, which is just 
saying so much. Because they're already... I mean, look at the... They're very lithe and very... They're superhuman. I mean, too. Eldar will regularly be so fast that Marines need to go. Okay, hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. let Just, me focus up here. You know, you know when you're playing a rhythm game and it's like, whoa, whoa okay, uh, okay, I can, I can keep up with this, but now no, I'm no, no, thinking. No, 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 it's the difference between you're, you're, you're playing a fighting game with your, your, your little sibling or something, and then they're like, oh, I beat you after you go easy on them, and then you hit the. Yeah, you, you lean forward. Yeah. I love the lean for Yeah, because, I mean, anyone who's played fighting games with anyone and they were holding back only to be told, I beat you, immediately leans forward. You see the lean forward, you it's, it's over. start crying now. Yeah, immediately. Uh, <laughs> he's also very jovial and tends to be very happy. And just the sight of him tends to make the Eldar immediately think, oh, we've won, he's here. And to be fair, he's one of those Phoenix Lords that we've never had to recover his armor. Yeah, he has lived through it all since the beginning i would assume it's because to kill him you have to catch him and to catch him <laughs> and good luck good good luck with that good luck so uh they they are so much fun and i really want to see more of them but we don't get to see too much of them sadly that sounds um, like I, I, I like i like the sound of them they're so much fun uh next up is the fire dragons under fuegan Fuegan. Yeah, I mean, you can you can tell. Can you? Fuego. They're, they're the fire division. They are the napalm division. They are the war crimes division. There's no, there's, the, every the, faction needs the, one. They're the Ford guys. Pinto division. <laughs> 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 yeah, 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 it's, um. Uh, only like five <laughs> people will get that. <laughs> no, if you've driven a car in America, you'll probably get that. And if you haven't gone, you should look it up. Uh, <laughs> Uh, they they are very they're fairly slow, but again slow by Eldar standards. So still much faster than most things. Um, they will use explosives. They you basically want to send these guys when the enemy is fortified. And the reason I quite like them the most is because Foygen is destined to be the last of the Eldar. Apparently, um, they have their own version of Ragnarok. It's all going to end terribly. Every Eldar is going to die. Every Chaos God's going to die. Everyone's going to die. But this guy will die. But he'll be the last of them. He'll be the last one. He'll die. be going down fighting. Yeah, no, his his every every Eldar is destined to do something, and the main shtick of it, Cliff notes, is all oh, the Eldar will die, <laughs> and that is a cost of permanently killing chaos, which is again pretty cool. The reason Fuegan matters so much to that is because he's fated to bind their concept of destruction under his will. And then wage a war against all of the Eldar's enemies, which is everything not Eldar, and win before finally landing the last blow and dying afterwards. His, again, I think I mentioned this in the Patreon video. His entire gimmick is, I'm going to kill all of you and then myself. <laughs> And, I mean, you look at the guy. I mean, he, he does not show up often, but when he does, he can look at whole battle lines and all of your skin will start to sizzle. Oh, that's awesome. I love that. And depending on who it is, that, that could... That totally does not make my skin crawl at all. I mean, for most humans, that's it. Congratulations, the Eldar won. Um, a lot of the time, Marines will do that and just say, eh, whatever. <laughs> because Marines are just such L Listen, maybe, weirdos, maybe, man. maybe it's because I'm like some form of bitch made, but I cannot, I cannot tank out uh, uh, full body third degree burns. <laughs> Well, <laughs> space marines are supposed to. Um, they, I am not a space marine. They, they do also get used in negotiation because uh, <laughs> one of my favorite uh, Eldar negotiation tactics is, um, <laughs> rogue, this has happened once before, a rogue trader arrives to negotiate with the Eldar because they can do that. They have the power to do that. And the Eldar are rational beings. They will cut a deal. And so they go do that. And as they're approaching the bargaining table, uh, the... <laughs> As, as as they're approaching the bargaining table, uh, the fire dragons sneak on board the ship and detonate it in a spectacular manner. Fundamentally altering the amount of leverage every party at the table now has. <laughs> That'd do it. <laughs> a little underhanded, but... A deal's a deal. That'd do it. You have no ships, you have no guns, you have no crew now. Let's talk. <laughs> the fire dragons. The art of the deal. <laughs> it's, it's the art of the deal. I, it's such a fun... And it also shows, again, how 
kind of pretentious the, the Eldar can be because they don't even respect you enough to actually negotiate. They just, look, 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 look. That thing that escaped the zoo exhibit is going to think it's all high and mighty and it's going to try and make a hard deal and whatever, whatever, whatever. I just want to buy the car at that price, so blow up his car. <laughs> and then if he wants a ride home, he can sell me the car. <laughs> They're so full of themselves. It is so much fun. Uh... <laughs> Next up is the Striking Scorpions, and they are all about landing on your enemy as hard as you possibly can. It is the Acme Anvil kind of thing. Uh, if which, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, most of the um, most of the animal allegories here have made sense, except for the, the. I'm not gonna lie. This one doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Maybe it's just because I hate scorpions. Um, imagine you are a scorpion-sized thing, and then you get hit by its stinger once. Fair enough. You know, it's it's the, if if you are to speak softly and carry a big stick, this is the big stick. Yeah. It is sudden. It is brutal, and they have the unique privilege of having the only phoenix lord who has kind of fallen into chaos. Kind of. Kind of. Ish. He, he's not with a dark Eldar. He's off doing his own thing. He's become an incubus. It's. Fun for the whole family. Not fun for the whole family. No. Not fun for the whole family. Um, Maybe fun for him. Nobody else. Nobody else at all. Nobody else. Uh, and they have a new leader, and they're now a bit more tempered, but when they still land on you, they, they still land on you. Uh, this has given them a unique chip on their shoulder, though, because um, I've said this before. I will say it again. The Eldar are very full of themselves, meaning that they will work together, even if they don't agree, because I'd rather work with that than... Whatever the hell that, that is, is. Right? And so a lot of the time, the Eldar, the Amish Eldar will work with the Craft World Eldar, will work with the Dark Eldar to accomplish something just on a look. We're, We're have, all Eldar here. She's watching. They're watching all of us, man. Okay? <laughs> just can we please knock this out? And everyone will go, yeah, yeah, whatever. yeah, whatever. Whatever. Sure, let's knock this out. It's either that or I work with the Imperium and... I don't want to do that. Nobody wants to do that. <laughs> At least no Eldar wants to do that. The Striking Scorpions hate that, though. They do not want to work with the Dark Eldar at all. They they would almost rather work with the Imperium. Well, to be fair, to be fair, to be fair, if your partner cheated on you with your best friend, you're no longer friends with your best friend. No. No. Like... They can go do their own thing. You're yeah. going to move on. Yeah, pretty much. That makes sense. Um, next up is the Dark Reapers. They've become so numb. It's nothing but edge. It's nothing, <laughs> nothing but edge. Uh, they have the unique privilege of having the only other Phoenix Lord who has not had to have his armor recovered. He's Himothy. He has always had it on from... He does not need a replacement. He is perfectly fine. He's also the only Eldar who is in capable of taking a loss incapable he does not understand the meaning of those words he, he only goes out and wins they represent Cain as a destroyer they accomplish that <laughs> real hard they have some of the most heavy weaponry imaginable they have some of the most heavy armors imaginable and the phoenix lord at the head of it all has some tangible genuinely only eldar wins under his belt and a gun scythe and a gun scythe which is really cool and really edgy. It doesn't make it any less cool. He really has become so numb. Yeah, no, he, he has, when everyone else was so busy with the 13th Black Crusade, he dove into the Eye of Terror to get his craft world back. And did so. Completely ignoring everything else going on with that crusade, because it's irrelevant. I don't care. It's not my problem. Presumably, Death Metal was playing the entire time as well. Yeah. Yeah, and, and they're, they wear the equivalent of, like, Eldar Power Armor. It's so cool. I don't care how edgy it is. It is so much fun to envision an Eldar who is slower because they're in Fallout style power armor with a gun scythe and so many skulls you can't count them all. However, man oh man is that effective in combat. I mean, we were I was looking for art during the Patreon video and every kind of pad you could think of for armor is a skull. Shoulder yeah. shoulder pad? Skull. Skull. Belt, Knee skull. pads? Skull. Mm -hmm. Belts? Yeah. Skull. Mm -hmm. Skulls. Skulls. Cod piece? Skull. Yep. <laughs> I'm not lying. They had a skull cod piece. I've said this before. I'll say it again. If the bit's good, you feel no shame in committing with it. And he has a fantastic <laughs> bit. I feel no shame in him committing it to it at all. 
He's so cool. And he only, with each, as time passes in 40K, he only gets more and more menacing. And so I am here for it. Next up are the Knights in Shining Armor. They're the Shining Spears. Their whole gimmick is they just ride in on jet bikes and, and massive, massive lances and just kind of skewer everything, run back around, skewer, skewer everything, everything, run back around. It's very the Knights of Old where you're not changing how this battle is going very much, but also, man, oh man, am I glad that you're on my side because that's a big lance and if it touched me, I'd be dead. It's like the sweeping cavalry. You mm -hmm. use them as a sweeper. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, their whole thing is basically Kane the hero. That, that, that feeling of, oh, thank God, he's here. You're all dead now. And that is what they're meant to represent. Sadly, there's not too much about them. Unfortunate. Um, warp spiders are the best defense is a good offense. I saw some art of these guys. They it's look so cool. Very cool. Uh, th what they're named after is even cooler because... Remember how everyone dies, goes onto a flash drive, and then is plugged into the massive, massive data bank with everyone's soul in it? Yes. Sometimes demons get in there. Oh. Sometimes other things get in there. That sounds like it's a bad time. Yeah. Um, it, not really. Because they have these things called warp spiders that live in there, and they look for souls that don't belong. And if they do, they will just eat it. Wholesale. Really? And it's described as one demon pops up, they just swarm around it and kill it. It's it's very much so like, you know how bees kill a wasp by swarming around it, heating it up, and then it dies? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's really but, cool. But with psychic energy. Um, so that's what these guys are named after. And again, they represent best defense, great offense. So you show up on an Eldar world, and they teleport behind you. <laughs> Nothing personnel, kiddo. You are s dead so fast. You... <laughs> Like, yeah, sure, walls are great. They're super neat. Do, do you need... Listen, 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 listen. Listen. Do you need a front door if every time someone you didn't want to walked in had their neck broken? Like, yeah, sure, it makes delivering mail way more hazardous, but, like, I don't need a front door now. And that's the approach they take. You uh, just have to make arrived, sure... arrived, dead. You just have to make sure that you leave a note for your Amazon delivery driver to not leave it on the inside stoop. Yeah. Just leave it on the stairs. Um, yeah, 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 that's perfect. That's good. Uh, yeah, no, 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 no. Just keep... Don't, don't get any closer. Don't get any closer. Just trust. go back to the car. Trust don't me. Don't put it in the door. Just trust. <laughs> Just trust. Uh, the way they accomplish this is even... It's even cooler than that because they jump through the warp to get to you, which the Eldar are very visible in the warp. They're going right to where they lurk and are watching. And every time they do that, they run the risk of Slanesh just getting them. Yeah, I was going to say, that's some risky business right there. Yeah, and it's even represented on the tabletop where there's a one in six chance they'll jump, <laughs> dead. Disappear. Gone. Slanesh got them. That's Whoops. really cool. It's so cool. It's really cool. They are very heavily respected among all of the shrines because... Yo, oh, you're taking the biggest risk here. Uh, yeah. Technically, you're compartmentalizing yourself so Sinesh can't get to you, but you're compartmentalizing yourself on their front lawn. <laughs> <laughs> like, that is so much sketchier. It, it, it's, it's like having a stalker, and the only way you can get places is by moving through their living room. Frightening. It's so cool. Uh, and we also don't know who their Phoenix Lord is. There's a we chance. don't? No, not at all. There's a chance they were gotten by Slanesh. We don't know. Okay. Yeah. They just. Okay. It's so cool. <laughs> that. I think I found my new favorite aspect. Of oh, the yeah. Aspect Warriors. Um, the next up are the Shadow Spectres. Uh, they're, they have jump packs and they are really, really. Re they're basically tank snipers, for lack of a better term. Um, they have these beam rifles that they can use, and the most fun thing about it is they can join all the beams together to make one bigger beam. Oh, they uh, cross the streams. Yes. Uh, there's not much more to them other than that. I'll be dead honest. <laughs> Some of these guys are kind of new, and as such, we don't have much on them. Another fairly new ones are the Crimson Hunters. Uh, they're it's Top Gun. 
It's it's highway oh. to yeah. yeah the, uh, these are the guys who we talked about in the Patreon video, and I said somebody if it's if it's a Top Gun, somebody needs to make a custom army where it's just everybody in uh, beach volleyball garb. <laughs> yep, the, these are the guys. Uh, they are all about airborne pursuit and superiority, and they are really new, so we don't know much more than that. <laughs> um, they do. I mean, they, they, they do dominate in the air. That much is known. And they do use really, really powerful weaponry. It's... it's as, as Air Forces oftentimes do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, think of the A-10, war, A-10 Warthog's gun. It's more of a gun with wings, pretty much. Yeah. But th- that's, what, that's the I mean, hell, even the, even the F-16's minigun is <laughs> jarring. Mm-hmm. And, and the nicest thing about all these paths is, so long as you don't commit to the bit too hard... You can serve in multiple different ways. The main thing about the paths is it makes you a far more competent and complete warrior um, because you kind of don't need to give a... PTSD says who is, is effectively what the, the masks serve to accomplish. It's detaching yourself from the action you are committing so that you are not personally harmed by it. And especially when it comes to the Eldar who feel things very intensely, if they didn't put on this put on their war face effectively to fight they wouldn't accomplish a thing listen listen the 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 dude who has committed uh uh these atrocities and has like uh some sort of uh stress disorder over it is four compartments over there yeah uh, it's not me mm-hmm. you're talking to different comp- compartment right yeah. now it, it's th- that it's is not, not me. that is not who i am that is just something i am capable of and they they cope basically like that and if I mean, listen, war is hell for everyone involved, and we already feel really badly once you go in and out of it. But imagine, for example, you could murder someone on the battlefield, effectively, and, and then, then physically feel what they're feeling in that moment. Feel their soul slipping away. Tangibly. I'm not talking like, it's one thing to look up another human in the eye and see the light fading. That's horrific. That is horrific. I'm talking you can tangibly feel it, too. You can see why the Eldar need to just kind of mm, that's compartmentalize. Not who I am. That's not who I am. This is just something I can do. Just a job I can do, and that's how I do it. And um, when they have to draft Eldar who are not on the path to accomplish a task, because sometimes they do, sometimes there's not enough people present currently. Um, they have psychers in the background, just shh, don't think about it, shh, don't think about it, shh, don't think about it, <laughs> <laughs> just effectively shielding their minds so that they don't. Because if they didn't do that, an Eldar would land one kill shot, immediately break down crying. Yeah. immediately break down crying and be useless for the rest of their lives as they unpack this. Yeah, because they're so, like, psychically empathetic yeah. that, like, oh, I felt that dude's head blow up as I blew it up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, and this, I love it when they delve into this with psychers, how horrific it can be. Because, like, the Thousand Sons occasionally will get ready to shoot someone and they will foresee exactly how it's going to go before it happens. And it kind of messes with you. Really, it's one thing to pull the trigger and then see it happen and go, oh, that's horrific. It's another to know this is exactly how I need to do it. Mm. And then look at them still alive looking at you. <laughs> it's just like, I see myself killing you. Yeah, yeah. Being a psyker is not always great. It's it's, it's yeah. kind of a raw deal, actually. <laughs> a lot of the time, you're like, yeah, sure, lightning out the fingertips, super fun, whatever. Uh, it's kind of a raw deal. It can be a really tough time. Because you feel everything that, you, you feel if every you're... death around you, and also you have a badge on your lapel that says state sanctioned. Yeah, which is not great. <laughs> not, not, well, in, in the Imperium, anyway, the Eldar are more like a, we know, it's whatever. Because the Eldar are all technically psychers to some extent. They're just, I love the Eldar because your average Eldar is what, humans would consider a psyker and the best of the best that the Eldar have can plan by seeing into the future thousands of years. Like there, there are whole orc wars that have been redirected at humans because one guy sat down on humana, 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 humana. Mm, that's going to happen. That's where and they're going. Let's that. That may chip the paint on my 98 Honda craft world. And so to avoid that from on the craft world. And so to avoid my craft world from getting even maybe scratched, let us blow up that planet, which will then launch debris at that planet, which will then knock it off kilter, affecting the gravity on that planet, which will then redirect their ship toward that planet, which is gonna be a hell of a fight. And the humans have marines anyway. Ugh, it's fine. 
<laughs> and this is just a thing. There are so many conflicts that work out to and this this is the other this is the other shoe dropping for the Eldar because for every time they lose, there's 101 conflicts you could look at and go, hmm, that shook out too well for you. Why did that shake out so well for you? You weren't even involved. There was somebody in the background who had uh, foreseen this a thousand years ago. And Just, then... hmm, looks like I'm going to be late to school in three weeks. It'd be a shame if all the doors just wouldn't open one day. Weird. Weird. All the locks were changed, mm -hmm. so massive, nobody could open them. Massive power outage, you say? <sighs> Darn. Guess I won't have to make it. So oh, well. shreds, you say? Yeah, I. It, it, that's the that's the fun of the Eldar. There's also 101 other paths we didn't cover. There's the path of command, which um, you you want to guess? I, I, they make the best generals. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, you served in one aspect path, and now you want to like oversee and grand strategize. The path of command sounds like a, a mechanic from a video game I've played before. Probably. Um, there's also the path of the outcast, which is okay. Are you are you an Eldar rogue trader now? N no, it is so much cooler than that, and a sign of a very functional society. It is the Eldar acknowledging that teenagers are shitters, and so they've provided them with a path where you can go off and be edgy. I don't care. Ah, uh, and then you can figure it out. Do you want to come back to the craft world, or do you want to go off and live a swashbuckling life? Doesn't matter to me. And so they have that path, and that way there's still, like, guardrails for the kid. Kid. It could be a 200-year-old person. But there's still guardrails for the kid so that the second they leave, Slanesh doesn't just immediately grab them and take them away. And that's so cool to me. It's actually how you get, like, a, an Eldar in your party in the Rogue Trader game. Really? They're not cast. Oh. Mm-hmm. They're a reckless, They're rebelling teenager. teenager. Yeah, it's like, no, mom, I don't want to live on this craft world. I'm going to go off and do my own thing. I'll get my own ship with Blackjack. And I can't finish that line. <laughs> that Eldar is literally a minor. Stop. Well, again. <laughs> they maybe just have the Blackjack, and that's, yeah, if just, that's legal in their craft world. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there is the path to, uh, well, this is the path I was mentioning earlier where you can just see the future. And the, the, the logical extremes of this path are so ridiculous. It's so funny to me, you, man. You, you're prescient up to a thousand years in advance. It, it is, it is, it is. Listen, humanity has their moments of, I can see where your sword's going to swing and I can dodge it perfectly. These guys are leaps and bounds beyond. They know that you will beat them in a sword fight. Therefore, they will kill your grandfather's best friend. That way you never get introduced to your grandmother and they never hook up and you never happen. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Because yeah, I could sit there and oh, I can see your sword swings and I will dodge them all before they happen. Or I could prevent you altogether. Hmm. Yeah, it's scary. Huh. It is hard, proper, good future sight. To be fair, there's only one guy who's that good, and he's kind of a knob, but man, is he, he fun. He'd be the guy who's just like, that dude, that dude's going to dent my S2000 in 4,000 years. I'm going to kill his bloodline. Yeah, well, and, and the problem with him specifically is um, writing for him is exceptionally difficult because... He's redirected whole wars. He can see thousands of years into the future and still gets beaten pretty regularly. Yeah, he, he, uh, so sometimes, sometimes the writers uh, will want him nearby. And this is make no, it make sense. No, this is. I, and let me be clear. This is not me slighting any writers because oh, the games are. No, that's a difficult character to it's, write for. It's just genuinely how. Okay, cool. This is the other don't have that many named characters to begin with. And people do like this character, so I want to involve them in the novel. And this is a story that they would be involved in, but how the hell do I have him here and, like, not win immediately? It's because the same problem Magnus has, he where he can never be anywhere because he's going to win two-handedly. He should have seen this event a thousand years ago and planned for it and will win. The, the, the highest of the highest when it comes to psychers are a pain to write for no absolutely which is why magnus regularly just kind of gets unsatisfactory win losses where he wins by body count but technically is banished back into the warp with the sentence and all was according to plan and it's like was it was, was it, it? You was got it? Thrown that off sounds a like cope it sounds like cope and and so it's, it's it's really genuinely tough to write for him i find he is best written about 
when he's not near the fight per se, but actively still having an effect on it. You know, there's a few there's a few moments where the Eldar have won and it's very heavily implied that because something he did like 500 years ago led to this. I think it would be... And that's the best way to do him. I think it would be very cool to have him have like a struggle against like fate or something. Mm -hmm. Like a, a Xenoblade Chronicles moment where he can see the future, but like he can try and change it, but how much can he do before it's like, this is impossible, this is fate. Well, that would be fun. The problem is he's... Again, he's been written too competently. You know, he's, he, I'm not talking, oh, I, it's not that so Raven zoom into his eye, sees an event and zooms out. It is, oh, that's going to happen. What if I take this course of action? That'll happen. And then if I take this course of action, he can see. He's so far ahead. He's he so can, many steps he ahead. He can explore the paths if he so chooses yeah. in some cases. How do you yeah. write that? You, you, Genuinely. You, you, you can't. It's like near it's impossible. It's so difficult. But when they manage it, oh my God, is it cool. Um, but before you get to that, you have to walk the whole path of the seer to, you know, be able to see that. And do any of that. Yeah. Uh, and not every Eldar can even get to that level. There's a little bit of innate talent with that guy. He's weird. I, 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 yeah. Yeah, he's odd. I, yeah. Regardless, what does matter is they are dying there's no debate the Eldar are on the back foot they are the closest things to the proper losers of 40k because Poor Eldar. because it's not even like they're losing relative to everyone else they're losing relative to themselves look at the highs of the Eldar. nobody comes close mm -hmm. not not even close. they won they won they hard had a time period where they were the victors of 40k they, they won mm -hmm. they won life and then they threw it all away it, Was it I, worth it? it? It sounds ridiculous, but the Eldar kind of peaked in high school. It's just high school for them was 10,000 years ago. Oh, 20, no, like, wait. Really, I really hope high schoolers aren't doing what the Eldar were doing. Hmm. <laughs> Valid point. <laughs> 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 but, oh, you're terrible. What matters is today they are stuck trying to pick up the pieces and they have 101 ways to try and do that. And all of them, I love it because in every single path you can feel this, there's this tinge of desperation in, I just have to do this because if I don't, oh my God, are things gonna get so much worse? I just have to do this, man. If I focus on this, maybe things will get better, hopefully. I, if not, that Fuegan guy will at least get everyone else. I'm part of a dying species and when I die, somebody's going to snatch my soul out of me and mm -hmm. do, Things with it. <laughs> things. <laughs> things. <laughs> but yeah, that does bring an end to this episode. You again have those two choices. It is the Gene Stealers and Abaddon. And then one of them will disappear forever, never to be seen again. Uh, Until the 13th poll. Jesus, you're aggressive. I, I'm not putting any fingers on the scale. Vote however you wish. Um... Any excuse to see Coda not wear the full jean outfit would be fantastic. In my I, I will, I will, I will even pull out the jean shoes, and I will put my feet on the desk. Thank you so much for watching this episode, and as always, thank you for being you.